At the same time, the southern boundary battleground Phoenix has also launched its final assault on Objective Scorpion. You can see on the screen the troops conducting the final assault. Anti-tank capabilities are deployed. In front of you, the Romanian and Polish platoon is getting position. Manned by Polish forces here, Patria AMV is an infantry fighting vehicle. you will see the Puma drone that is screening in the deep. Puma is screening the area to confirm the enemy layout. Puma UAVs are able to fly up to 15 kilometers and have three hours of flying autonomy. They are sling launched and have an optical and infrared camera. They also can eliminate targets for L assets. Their live stream video allows the division to follow the Ricky and to confirm the enemy layout on the bridgehead. In the combined arm fight, a drone is a perfect sensor to allow an efficient target acquisition meant to shorten the observe, orient, decide, act loop and allow notarization of the enemy with artillery. You can upgrade the rocket launchers from it. My jobs here, I'm double headed. First time in the NATO operational chain of command. I'm the deputy commander of the multinational division southeast in Bucharest. And second, I'm also, as it has been just reminding uh, now, I'm also the French senior national representative. Because you know that France is a framework nation, framework nation under NATO flag in Romania, so it's important to have that two jobs at the, for the same person. So welcome in Chiku, and I'm... Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, we can start. I, I have... have to repeat that my double job or not? No, I no. have a question. I'm Adrian Popa from G4 Media. Why, if the enemy uses FPV drones, how they will be count countered? Because uh, I didn't see any je jeopard here or countermeasure for FPV drones. 
Yes, you're talking about the live ex exercise. Yes, yes. You've just attended, so it's a very good question. But uh, currently, it's an exercise, you know. So we are training hard during that type of exercise. But what you s just seen currently, a few minutes ago, it was a, a big amount of a lot of capacities. So the idea of that live ex was most to uh, put you, to jump you in uh, that joint and uh, combined arm exercise live X than to stress on only one capacity. So the idea to keep in mind is we are training hard to put all that assets, all that capacities together in a kind of very, very big interoperability issue and to train commonly not only the assets, but as you just seen, the nationalities, nations. So you see Polish, French, Romanian, Belgian and Luxembourgese and so on. So the idea was to bring all that people together to be able to train together, much more than to fight a real enemy, just to train together. It was the main purpose of that exercise. Yes, Can you thank you. The scenario? Please one question after all. Please, our news. The scenario of the exercise was to, uh, as I just mentioned, to face to an enemy coming in front of us and in front of that enemy to be able to gather and to have an overall maneuver of all the combined arm capacity and also joint capacity because you saw at the very beginning of the live X planes, fighter from Spain, fighter from Romania, then the helicopters, then drone, then reconnaissance, then main battle tanks, then so on, a lot of capacity able to train and to deploy themselves and to fight at least on the field. Pro TV? What was the part? It's a very good question. It's part of the big challenge we are facing every day. It's interoperability. So the possibility for us to train together with a communication system, CIS, maneuver, because we are soldiers. On the ground, we are speaking more or less the same language. It's maneuver, able to fight, able to fire, but at least when you have to control it, when you have to come and to lead it at the CIS level, the communication level, it's a, it's a challenge and it's something we are training hard for. First, with the language, English language. Second, with procedures, NATO procedures. It's another language that's very important for us to use that NATO procedures and last but not least and it was part of the main of the objective of the day to train together boots on the ground general, another question here uh, yes uh, general uh, valentin staff from dg24 uh, the, the exercise that uh, happened today is just a part of a bigger test for the french army we know that uh, in the next spring you will have the days of Bayesian, uh, spring exercise when France will try to deploy a brigade. After that, in 2027, you will try to deploy a division. Tell us how uh, will it happen? Uh, how many days uh, do you need to, to deploy the brigade? So, uh, first, it's not only a challenge for France, it's a NATO issue, definitely, huh? because we are not talking about a French brigade, but about a forward land force brigade and a multinational brigade, because in that brigade, you will have, for example, a Belgian battalion also deployed, you will have uh, Luxembourgese troops and so on. So it's uh, it's definitely a NATO issue. We are here in, in the NATO flag. But once I said that, the first phase of the initial deployment is relying on their uh, national responsibilities. It means Belgian res responsibility, French responsibility to deploy all that troop in from France, from Belgium, from Luxembourg, directly to Romania to cross over Europe. So it's uh, the first big challenge. The second big challenge will be to deploy after the movement phase in Romania. We have identified a lot of places. Uh, we are building uh, currently, right now, a lot of facilities in that deployment places identified with what we call the host nation. And specifically in this Eastern front in Romania, it's Romania. So it's a uh, at the very beginning, it's a business for France, Belgium, and so on. At the end, it's a business also for the Romania host nation and under the NATO flag. So the most 
challenging part of this exercise will be, as you just mentioned it, the ability for us in a NATO way to deploy all that brigade from all the country contributing nations to Romania. It will be an amount of about 4,000 troops, more than 1,000 vehicles, and uh, yes, it's it's a it's a big challenge to do it. But uh, currently, right now, we are working hard to prepare it. How many days do you need? Oh, uh, it's a good question. The idea is to be able to uh, arrive in Romania uh, in less than uh, two weeks. Another question, maybe? But it's another important point. Sorry, I'm, I forget it, but it's very. Important.